The mission uh, is dedicated to enhancing global research, uh, education, and clinical expertise in the treatment of vascular disease using innovative technologies and interventional techniques. And that clearly is what you're going to be witnessing in the next couple of days at the meeting uh, here. And so it's very consistent with the society's mission. Uh, there are about 2,000 members representing 57 countries. Um, it, we're really trying to expand on a global uh, mission here. Uh, and as I mentioned, it is definitely uh, multidisciplinary with vascular, uh, endovascular, CT, cardiology. It is uh, our pleasure to be uh, very enthusiastic about your meeting. Uh, I think that it's going to be a very, very good time for all. We'll enjoy it. Uh, and uh, we'll look forward to, uh, I'll look forward to talking to you about the evolution of our specialty uh, in my next lecture. In the early days, uh, it wasn't very popular. Uh, there was a lot of resistance. Uh, in fact, I was on the board of the Society of Vascular Surgery, and when I would speak to the classical vascular surgeons about the idea of endovascular, they really wanted to put me in the, in the other room. They were not very interested in <laughs> hearing about it. So you may wonder why I've picked a title, Is There a Quagmire in Our uh, Future? Certainly, over the uh, years, neuro and, and cardiovascular have been hand in hand. The treatment of cardiovascular disease, I think we know, has undergone dramatic changes over the past uh, two and three decades. Okay, the advent and acceptance of endovascular approaches to cardiovascular therapy have created a revolution in our specialty. And I think all of you who have followed this over the last few years would accept that. Procedure and technique changes are requiring the development of different skill sets and cognitive training. And this is really reflected in structural changes uh, because we have new procedural suites. Uh, I visited the, the new clinic uh, two days ago here, uh, and it's fabulous uh, what uh, the, the joint uh, uh, association with Phillips and the clinic have done in the terms of getting their wonderful equipment there. Most of the complications we have to face are just arriving through the very easy procedural steps. So I want to go through some of those steps we all have to go through. I think it's these 10 steps every carotid uh, procedure has to take. It's just the vascular access, the angiographic evaluation, guiding sheets or guiding catheter replacement, crossing the stenotic lesion with a protection, decision-making process, if you need distal or proximal protection or even no protection, lesion predilatation or not doing a predilatation, stent deployment, post dilatation of your stent, if you should do it or not, removal of the protection device, final angiographic control, and sheath removal and access care. These are all the things we have to do. So the first question is, can I gayfully, safely get there? So the access to the common carotid artery is very important, and um, the placement of a distal protection device in the internal carotid artery is an issue. And the most problems, I think, arise from the aortic uh, arch and from the lesion itself. So you know, you are aware of all these different types of aortic arches. And <clears throat> complex lesions um, will lead to some problems during um, the engagement of the um, common carotid artery and the access to the internal carotid artery. So our preferred catheters for aortic arch type 1 are just these anti-grade catheters with a vertebral tip, Judkins, Headhunter, Berenstein, Weinberg, JB1 catheters, uh, which I like for these very easy uh, type 1 and maybe also type 2 arches. The type 3 arches are just very complex, so you need a special um, dedicated catheter to engage these aortic uh, type 3 arches like a sidewinder, VTEC Newton or JB2 catheters. These are the ones we are going to prefer for these complex lesions. So if you ex access the common carotid artery, uh, I think you have to be aware of ad adverse anatomy. So in formal times, we say we don't need an, we only need uh, duplex ultrasound. We don't need um, MRA or CTA angio. So this is just really helping you if you have an MRA or CTA just beforehand to plan your procedure carefully. So because you're aware of all these irregularities and kinkings, callings of the um, common carotid artery. 
And you see, we can go into the middle cerebral artery and the vertebral and basilar artery to do that, and I will come back to that later when I have a second talk, but we can also treat the internal carotid artery. In a combination of these stent retrieval systems with suction, which we apply at the same time. We will encounter two different types of occlusions. One is the embolic disease. Most of the patients suffer from atrial fibrillation, and that will end up as the bifurcation of the carotid, internal carotid artery in the middle and anterior cerebral artery, so the typical carotid T occlusion, and we have bifurcational disease and later on an occlusion there. When you get the patient in the beginning, not always you know what is the case with these patients, but uh, I will first describe the technique, what we do. So when we have a carotid T occlusion, we first pass the thrombus by guide wire and microcatheter. In reality, we, we do not cross through the thrombus, but between thrombus and vessel wall, as we know. We bring the tip of the microcatheter just distal to the occlusion. We pull out the wire. We bring in the stent retriever system. It's wonderful that these O14 lumen of the microcatheters allows us to bring in a stent. When the stent is at the level of the thrombus, the microcatheter is pulled back, and the stent is then deployed. In this region, Balkan region, the frequency of ischemic stroke is extremely high in comparison with Western European countries. Uh, the implications on a medical and the financial part of the society are pretty big, pretty important. Two uh, strong points in a fight uh, with ischemic stroke are introduction of intravenous fibrinolysis and uh, formation of the stroke units in, in our, our countries, which uh, should make the fight more, more efficient. The aim is to get the reperfusion in order to fight for the territory which is not permanently damaged so far by uh, the artery occlusion. If you go back to the mechanism of the fibrinolysis, the only thing which actually destroys the thrombus is the plasmin. Everything else just uh, act as uh, uh, creators of the, the plasmin from his uh, plasminogen ancestor. All advanced possibilities are very useful and we are routinely using them, including the quantification, the perfusion and the CT angio as well. Uh, if we are going just for, for MC occlusion, the result is, or may be, pretty, pretty favorable. The incidence of death or a stroke is uh, similar between surgical or endovascular procedures. The incidence of myocardial infarction is in favor of carotid stenting and the incidence of cranial nerve injury is in favor of carotid stent. We can say that the meta-analysis found that carotid endarterectomy is superior to carotid stenting for death, stroke, and acute myocardial infarction incidence at short-term outcomes. Дали имаме нужда въобще да класираме някъде като риск в някаква рискова група пациентите с ischemic болест на сърцето, всъщност те по презумция вече попадат в изключително високия риск и така тези пациенти определено са попадат в групата, която изисква изисква амбициозно лечение, т.е. клас 1А, тази рискова група, която вече има развит ischemic болест на сърцето, попада в клас 1А за лечение, за, миним... за намаляване на нивото на LDL холестерол. В много проучвания, множество, както за първична, така и за вторична профилактика, е доказано, че има директна връзка между нивата на LDL холестерола и развитието а, на сърдечно-съдовите заболявания, както и за тяхната прогноза. Къв тип пациенти с висок риск трябва да имат таргетна стойност, която да постигнем под 1,8 милимола на литър. In this case, uh, I think that we can use the 
closed cell but a flexible stand and our choice for today's uh, adapt from Boston Scientific it's a very particular device because it's a closed cell but it's very flexible make no stand and it's particularly useful when you, you have a significant uh, difference in the size of uh, internal carotid artery and left common carotid artery for a while we are switching to Sophia we just follow we, we with you on the screen and please now some connection with Santa Ana your case was already presented, so we can start yes. explaining what they are doing now. We it's have okay. heard, yes, uh, in Don't fact, uh, uh, you know already, this is a very young, 46 year, uh, years old patient. Uh, some details of the follow-up. His uh, arterial pressure now is uh, 110 millimeter systole on only two, only two medications, only two medicaments and uh, his elevated creatinine that was 162 before the renal stenting now is 100 so uh, definitely a positive result from the renal intervention well, with a radial access the left carotid artery that is with uh, severe stenosis around 90 percent uh, maybe even a little more we can uh, put on the screen the, what we have done until now uh, I would like to show you my uh, vascular access with uh, uh, internal mammary diagnostic cat catheter. Do you see it? Yes, yes, it's on the screen. Okay, this is the sele se selective injection with the internal mammary. And uh, I used uh, soft tip. Uh, uh, recently I received confirmation from the PCR board. And for the next PCR, we'll have a joint session with the Bulgarian Society and the Romanian Society of Cardiology next May in Paris. And it will be a great opportunity to demonstrate uh, our endovascular activity in our renal artery uh, treatment uh, next PCR. We are moving to Santana Hospital now. I hope we have a connection. Ivo, do you hear us? Yeah, we hear you very well. Okay, Sashko, can you finish the case? So. You are now, it's your turn. Very good. So, uh, if you can observe the, the screen, in fact, we did a roadmap uh, and uh, we crossed all the, already the lesion with the wire. And uh, I would like to, uh, in order to be more interesting for the audience, uh, in fact, we waited uh, for the live presentation in order to show the, the filter. This is my uh, favorite uh, first choice uh, filter in case of. Uh, uh, critical lesion because it's extremely low profile uh, crossing profile this is the spider five millimeter so the spider will be loaded now into the micro catheter that is uh, 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 taking the role of uh, delivery system so we don't need it in fact you of course we have a different experience here but uh, because you have a hybrid stand and you need to position your closed cell just in the middle and my experience is that maybe it's easier if you pre delay, but all the others think at the contrary, oh. so you're free to okay. make a choice. Oh. Yes. Okay, so uh, it's, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, I think that the, 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 the stand is really a low profile stand, and uh, it would be easy to cross the lesion and to implant the stand. And uh, we are going. We are going with the stand now. Again, it was not. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Little bit it's, straight. This is a very good point. That the lesion can hold the stand. Absolutely, we hope so. We hope. So. We will see. But with with this stand, you have a length of 30, I think. Doctor Petrov, what is the length of yes. your stand? So it's your your, your closed cell zone is about, uh, I think, uh, one centimeter. Exactly, you are absolutely right. So it's quite important for this stand uh, to be implanted precisely and in order to be implanted precisely, it's impossible to show, uh, so this is the handle, you see? Yes. This is the handle, there is a, a very special tiny uh, uh, lever, uh, that is uh, a very special tiny lever here, that is uh, in fact uh, one hand, one hand implantable system. Uh, okay, with the with the thumb, it's uh, it's uh, implanted. Uh, I would like to focus now on the screen because uh, the slow implantation is a rule because the the stand has some uh, trend to jump. 
so it's uh, it's quite important to to implant it slowly and uh, in order to achieve good position and to have some chance to re reposition the stand i think uh, this is the right zone